What's going on guys? Welcome to my filthy workbench. Um, recently I was making a video uh, in which I was soldering some wires and someone did not like my soldering method. Now I was being lazy in the video in their defense but uh, they showed me a really cool way of splicing wires before soldering them so I thought I'd show it to you guys real quick. Just got two wires here that I'm going to splice. You want to strip off three quarters of an inch to about an inch off of each wire. You want them to be roughly equal. So there we go. Now what is cool about this method is that it adds a redundancy to your splice so it's probably overkill for most applications. However, if you want a splice that is really strong, this is a good method. So, you're going to separate both of them into T's, like so. You want about equal amount of strands in each T. Now actually, before I do any of this, and I know that anyone out there who's ever done any soldering has made this mistake before, you want to take your heat shrink tubing, slip it on over, because then you have no way of sealing it all up when you're done unless you're lazy and you go with the tape style. Now this is similar to a lines, lineman splice except it adds a single uh, basically layer of redundancy. So you take these two T's, you're going to lay them onto each other and then you're going to twist them together. Make sure that it's a nice it would focus. There we go. Tight twist like that. And when they're twisted at the end, that you make sure that they're not, uh, don't have any sharp ends poking out or anything. Now you want to do that same exact thing with the other side. Nice tw tight twist. All right, now that you have that together, um, I like to use a little bit of soldering paste. Helps just with uh, getting the solder to soak into the uh, copper a little bit easier. It makes the whole soldering process a lot more enjoyable, basically. Now, right now I'm just using some crappy lead-free solder. Um, ideally you'd be using lead solder. You want to heat up that um, paste and then you can start uh, soldering the wires. Ideally starting from the side furthest away from the insulation, moving into the insulation. Notice how I'm heating the wires and then pushing the solder into the wires rather than putting the solder on the soldering iron. So the wires should be warm enough to where the wires will actually melt the solder and you don't have to touch the solder to the soldering iron at any point. Just slowly move closer and closer to the insulation. That is just so that the insulation doesn't get all melted and stuff. You can check over your soldering, make sure it's penetrated all the way through and stuff. And then now you can take these wires, bend them along the length of the insulation, like so. Make sure there's nothing sharp poking up that's gonna melt your heat shrink tubing. Take your heat shrink tubing down. Slide it all over the entire assembly, like that. And then you can take a lighter or a torch or even the soldering iron really and shrink the heat shrink tubing. Now, there you go, you got a nice sealed, strong connection. Now, supposedly this is one of the strongest connections you can do because it adds that second um, 
basically redundancy in there. It's basically like having two lineman splices um, instead of just one. So I wanted to test and see just about how strong this splice is. All right, so I'm on top of my workbench. This is the rafter for the roof. And you all might think I'm a moron, but in your defense, I am. Here is the splice, and I'm going to see if it uh, will hold my weight. Ugh. Attempt num number one was a fail. Let's get it uh, connected a little bit stronger. All right, so instead of tying it around the rafter, I did another one of those same splices. So there's actually two of them now. Um, here goes nothing. Oh yeah. Oh jeez, that makes me nervous. Let's try it. This way. Sweet. Well, that isn't proof. I don't know what it is. There's one of the splices, and there's the other one. Those are I don't know what these splices are called. They're sort of like alignment splice, but there's two of them. Um, in each one, but obviously it's strong enough to hold my weight and if your wires are under that much tension, especially in an automobile application, then you have a problem. So there is a simple easy way to make a super strong splice. Thank you guys so much for watching this video. If you're new to this channel, make sure to subscribe so you can watch some more. I do all sorts of stuff like build cool cars, so if you're into that sort of thing, hit the subscribe button and join us on this channel. Make sure to like this uh, video if you learned anything and comment down below and tell me what you think about this uh, splice method. Tell me if you have any other unique uh, ways to splice wires or anything you want to add. I'm curious as to what you guys uh, have to say. Thank you guys so much for watching. Have a great day. Peace out.